All right. So, if you don't know me, I'm Richard Brown. I'm the OpenSUSE chairman, and I'm going to be talking now about why we should be dis building our distribution properly, and really why we should be discouraging the use and the building of additional repositories. This presentation is a little bit like a football match. It's a game. It's a slide deck with two halves. There's going to be things I'm going to say that, well, people aren't necessarily going to agree with. People might not like. And I really need to ask that you know, any questions, any counterpoints, please try and save it to the end. There will be time for questions. Um, and hopefully, we'll get to a, an ending that we all like. But I don't really like football. Um, so I much prefer rugby. And there will be blood. There are things here that we really need to fix. Problems that have been lingering in the project for 10 years and it's about time we did something about them. And I want to start from the user's perspective. This fellow, kind of possibly one of our typical users. And you know, the average typical OpenSUSE user, as we saw with the slides earlier this week, is normally using Leap. And from the look of things, they're quite happy. Everything works, you know, no problems whatsoever. But sooner or later, they're going to find something else they want to use that for, some other bit of software. Maybe they're looking on Reddit. Maybe they're reading Hacker News, whatever. Some new bit of technology comes about, or they just hear about it for the first time, and they want to install it on their OpenSUSE machine. And when everything works properly, it's a relatively easy case of finding it. For example, using Zipper, a nice simple Zipper if Chromium. We'll find Chromium in our distribution repositories, nice and easy to install from there. Or they use Yast. Or, of course, if you're a GNOME user, we also have the GNOME software application store. And this is easy, and this is good, and then it's only one click or one command away to install everything, and everything is fine and simple, and everybody is happy. But what about when the package isn't in our distribution repositories? When it's not there? Like here, Elasticsearch. Zipper if Elasticsearch finds nothing. What do you do next? We haven't got that written down anywhere. We actually have no, no easy solution. The tools don't say, tell you anything. There's no simple documentation. We just expect our users to magically know this. And this isn't just a problem that OpenSUSE has. Um, so when talking about SLE, SLE 12 has a very fancy new set, a new feature set in, in SLE 12, where there are additional modules being released at a different cadence with a different support level so SLE customers can get certain software stacks at a faster pace, things like new PHP, advanced systems management tools, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're using it from a user's perspective, this is the first thing, time you realize you need to install a module when you find it isn't in the main base distribution. And if you use the standard tools, you go to YAS, for example, there's actually Nothing obvious there on even how to find the module. Now, you might be a smart user and realize that modules are delivered by SEC, so you put SEC in the search box and you find nothing. You might look for modules and find nothing. You might look for add-on products and you find a very nice add-on products window, but actually that's not the one for modules, that's the one for add-on products like HA and for Geo. And it's only if you actually type in the registration part, which luckily this bit is documented, where you then find the screen for adding extensions to your SLEAM machine. But then you don't know which one to actually click on. Because absolutely nowhere do we have a list of which packages are in which additional one of these repositories. Now, for OpenSUSE, we share some of these problems, but we have a nice magical tool as part of the software OpenSUSE.org search, which lets you find this stuff. But even then, we have some very serious problems with this. For example, looking for Elasticsearch, you get one, two, three, very clear different versions, a whole bunch of extra modules when all you really wanted was actually the top one. And in fact, the list goes longer and longer and longer. 
When you click on that, you get this lovely page, which actually has a little bit of information about the package. It doesn't have a screenshot, because obviously it's a console application, it shouldn't need one. And you don't really actually get any information about what to install where, apart from this big nasty button saying, show unstable packages, which you then click on, and you get this warning, which most people ignore, that you, know, you shouldn't really be using this, you shouldn't use unofficial repositories, it may be unstable, it may be experimental. And in fact, if you're using uh, a JavaScript blocker, this won't, actually won't even appear, so people don't even know about it in many cases these days. And then what this is then doing is going to OBS, looking at everything we have in home repositories and develop repositories, and trying to do its best at showing what is available there. And every single column on this is wrong. For starters, it's not ordered. There's absolutely, you know, it's got home repositories and develop repositories in, you know, pretty much a random scattering. It's not alphabetically listed. It's not listed by version numbers. You know, 175 there is a bigger, is higher than 144, but 135 is listed above it. The architecture column there is totally and utterly wrong. Develop languages Python does not only build for ARM v6; it builds for everything. And then at the end, you have a one-click install. Now, for this example, I've kind of assumed that. The user in question is, is a sort of a, a moderately skilled and experienced OpenSUSE user. So they've, you know, they probably know how the distribution is put together. They know that a develop project is where we're baking stuff, where developers are working on stuff. So in this example, the user then clicks on a one-click install. And click number one is obviously downloading the one-click install runner from Firefox. Click number two is this window, where it's forcing the adding of additional repositories to their machine. Now, for starters, the repositories it's adding are totally crazy. This was run on a tumbleweed machine, my one. I reproduced it a few times to make sure that I wasn't going crazy. And you can see there, it's adding the tumbleweed repository again, for reasons I can't explain. And it's adding OpenSUSE Factory PowerPC twice, two different versions of Power PC repositories on an Intel machine. And I have no idea why it's doing that whatsoever. But it's consistently doing that, at least. Now, on the search, we said it was only, a, uh, only ARM. Now, when you do it, you get something totally different. There's a complete confusing mismatch of what's going on there. At least the next screen is mostly accurate. I only wanted to install Elasticsearch, and it's pulled the packet information through, so that is all good and great. And then you get a screen here sort of warning you with a nice big red message, you know, these changes will be made to your system. There's no real notice here about how broken what it is about to do is. If you click next here, if this worked, it, luckily it doesn't, but if this worked, you would end up with a totally and utterly broken machine. And there's no real notice for that. We've just let them carry along quite happily add repositories that will break their machine, add a repository that they already have, and install a package that isn't going to work. But we've warned them. We've told them it's all on their own risk. Click number six, of course, we require root access, uh, root access to actually install anything. Click number seven, we actually require some, the GPG key for the additional repository because it's not built using our standard authorized keys. And click number eight is when the whole thing goes wrong, because the repository which one-click install was absolutely certain was fine doesn't actually work. So then the whole thing crashes, and the user doesn't get the package they want. Right now, one-click installs are broken. I've tried this three or four times with different packages. I wanted to actually have three or four examples. This one actually ended up being the first one I tried and had covered everything broken that I could find. So it's one example that kind of covers the whole mess. We really need to get this fixed. If we're gonna have one-click installs, they have to install stuff in a sensible way at the, the correct repositories and do the best to shield our users from doing stupid stuff that breaks their machines. Because then they go to the forums, then they go to IRC, then they go to uh, social media and moan that OpenSUSE is broken. OpenSUSE is fine. This is what's broken. 
Now, as I said, in this example, I'm assuming the user is you know, moderately skilled and moderately aware of what we're doing. So, of course, if you go to OBS, you can find the package in there. And this is the Develop Languages Python project. Digging around OBS, you can find the list of all of the repositories that it's building against, which is a surprisingly big list for a Develop project. I mean, SLE 11, SP3, SP4, SLE 12, SP1 and SP2, some weird bleeding factory, which I have no idea what that is, and a whole range of, of other bits and pieces. But obviously, in this case, I'm using Tumbleweed, so you can click on Tumbleweed, you get the list of the packages. From there, that tiny little link is actually the only thing I'm interested in, because I want to have the list of the repository URL, so then I can go to Zipper or to Yast and add the repository manually, which I do. I then do zip it in, and at this point, I'm happy. And everything's fine. It works most of the time, assuming the package is actually building properly, assuming the package is developed relatively well. Most things are all OK. And then I do a zipper up. And zipper wants to, to warn me that there's 97 packages from Develop Languages Python that it isn't going to touch. This is what would happen if I'm on Leap. If I'm on Tumbleweed and I do a zipper dump, it doesn't tell me it's not going to do anything. It tries to find a way to install the entire list of every single package in Develop Languages Python. So my lovely, tested, secure Tumbleweed installation, where we spent time testing and testing and testing to make sure that the whole thing works consistently and comprehensively with all of the stuff that you know is, for example, into OpenQA, immediately gets invalidated by package after package after package from Develop Languages Python. Now, I might be lucky. All 97 of these might work. But the chances are there's going to be at least one that doesn't. And it's going to break some other application elsewhere, make it harder for me to work with my other stuff, and generally cause me problems sooner or later down the road. This is what every Leap and Tumbleweed user has to deal with when that package isn't in the distribution. That's the best case. That's just not good engineering. But that's just scratching the surface. Worst case, we have no quality controls on develop repos. We're not meant to. They're development repos. So build failures happen all the time. Everything's moving around. Your package might not build anymore. When you're working with more and more, depend more, and more develop repos, dependency conflicts appear more and more often because we have no quality controls in there. There's nothing stopping one develop repo having one copy of a package and another develop repo have a different copy. So you're going to end up with package conflicts happening from different repositories that, you know, for very sensible reasons. Or the opposite, you end up with unresolvable dependencies because the, you know, the develop maintainer tried to do a good job of not duplicating stuff needlessly, so it only has the stuff they're interested in developing in there. So there's no way of installing it because it requires some other develop repo which isn't clearly obvious for the user to install. And then even if it works, even if it builds, even if it's dependency sane, the package still might be broken because that's why it's in a develop project. So we can test it, so we can make sure it works. The packages are meant to break in develop projects, that's why we have them, so they can break before we put it in the distribution. So what I want from sort of everybody and everything is develop projects shouldn't be used by users ever. Because the more I think about this, the more I think about how we could fix this and how the things that I'm going to suggest going forward, even if we implement every single one of them, we either compromise what the develop projects are meant to be for when it comes to developing stuff, it, or we end up shipping something broken to users. So in my opinion, we should keep develop projects in the role they were designed for and intended for, and we need to stop users using them. So how do we fix all of this? And there's really two options. One, fix everything. And there's a long list. I mean, so starting with OBS, I know there's some features for this already, but you know, it's also a case of how do we use OBS, and so maybe not actually changing how OBS works, but changing the, the project's use of the build service. 
But you know, maybe we need to have a cross-project dependency checker so we can actually see, okay, this devel repo and this devel repo work together. Is everything going to be sane? Is it going to work? We've had issues in the past with projects publishing broken packages or packages failing to build, the repo still being published and the entire thing no longer being consistent. So maybe we need to have some way of freezing the publishing of a project when there's a build failure in that repo. Or, or and or, maybe we need a new type of repo. We have the, the main official repositories. We have home repos for everybody to do anything they want. We have devel repos for building the distributions. Maybe we need a concept of a stable repo where we can say, okay, this stuff at least has been checked in some sense, it's been built properly, users can use stable, maybe that's what we need. Even if we have that zipper in order to kind of support these kind of concepts, maybe we need to get rid of the will not be installed warnings. The vendor concept is one of our greatest things, but at the same time causes an awful lot of confusion. So maybe we need to smoothen it out, tidy it up. Maybe, for example, the stable repos would be built under the OpenSUSE key. Maybe not, because Kulo is shaking his head at me already. And of course, improving the search functionality, both from you know, software.opensuse.org search and the OBS web search, but actually baking that ability to search into our tools, into Yast, into Zipper. So if you do a command, you know, maybe there should be a zipper CNF, command not found, zipper can tell you, hey, it's in this repository over there in the build service, add it in there. And it, there's already talk about doing that for SLE modules. You know, it's something we desperately need so users can find out where to get the stuff that they want. Adding that to Yast, of course, if we're doing it in zipper, we really should do it there too. In the one-click install, please just, we need to fix everything there. It needs to stop adding insane repositories to people's machines. It shouldn't be doing stuff like PowerPC for Intel. That's never going to work. And it isn't a one-click install. When it works best, it's still nine. So, you know, nine plus click install. We need to, you know, stop just pretending that it's the fastest way of doing everything. And on software.opensuse.org search, I mean, this has already started moving because uh, we had the workshop on Thursday. So we already have people looking at software.opensuse.org, tidying it up, simplifying it, and we really should be removing home repos and develop repos or making it incredibly hard to find it and incredibly obvious that you should be using the distribution first. Or we could just give up on packaging. There is these wonderful things called Snappy and Flatpak. In theory, for some of these, for some of the issues here, so for example, installing applications on top of Leap, there are there is some benefit there. You know, a Leap user wants to have the latest, shiniest new version of LibreOffice. It's a heck of a lot easier for us to put it in a flat pack with the GNOME runtime and all of that and have it installed. But as I thought about this, as I put this slide together it's always going to be an edge case if we use it properly. Because you don't want to get to the point where everything in your distribution, user-facing at least, is in some nasty containerized beast, and then you're explaining to users why your minimal install is 40 gigabytes for 300 packages. And then there's an open SSL update, and every one of those packages has to be updated, and then it's suddenly 40 gigabytes just to patch your machine. It's not the best way of doing things. But all of this stuff put together is a huge amount of work. Maybe, we, you know, we should go down this road. We should try and fix as many, many of these. But there is a shortcut. And, you know, at, during the keynote, we said, you know, British people and our lovely swearing, the easy option is to add your bloody packages to the distribution. Once they're there, they're tested, they're integrated, we have the tools, we have the techniques, we have the policies. This is how we should be getting software to our users. Tumbleweed, Slee, sorry, Tumbleweed and Leap should have as many packages as we can support to all of our users. We need to be doing that better. Even if we improve the other stuff, we still need to be doing this a heck of a lot more. And the best thing users can do to help us, well, they can help become maintainers, they can learn, or they can bug our maintainers to try and get stuff in there. 
The biggest bit of feedback I always hear is, oh, I didn't know anybody was using it. I didn't know somebody wanted that package. So please, users, if you're interested in a package, go to the OpenSUSE factory mailing list, try and find people to, fight, to package stuff, try and learn to help. We need to get more packages in there because that is the best, smoothest, and safest way of getting software in the hands of people. So now, kind of, no, less of the user story, more of the developer story. Why is this such a hard thing? How have we got here? Where's, where's the problem, really? Well, putting packages into the distribution is too hard. Everybody says that, ever. Even me, I've said it as well. It's sometimes true. And there is some truth to that. It's not trivial putting something in a distribution. But when you compare to what we're doing right now, this ends up actually being easier than the mess we're producing right now with our current way of doing things. Because if you think of, for example, the factory development process, this is how a package goes into factory and ends up in tumbleweed right now. Every single one of these steps was designed because our developers are lazy. And we want to make the next step less work and have less work to do in the future. We have the whole, you know, the first submission is reviewed by a whole bunch of bots because we don't want to be wasting our time reviewing for trivial issues. We pre-integrate test everything in staging in OpenQA because we don't want to be bothered with having to pick up a whole mess of a complicated distribution mangling of you know, package A from package B and cr clashing when it ends up in the distribution at the end. We only, we manual review you know, what we have to, when we have to, with the policies that make sense so factory can be kept clean, consistent, and moving as fast as it can. And then we QA test everything as much as possible, as often as possible, so we have as few users moaning about stuff being broken. All of this is actually to save us work. When we put something in a devel repo, we skip every bit of this. So every problem that this was designed to solve is totally and utterly bypassed. And in fact, it produces more problems. Because the role of the Devel project isn't just a case of, oh, it's a nice convenient place to throw a few things before it goes into factory. Every upstream is different. KDE have different paces of doing things. GNOME have different paces of doing things. So the upstreams all have different requirements, and we need to be agile enough to be able to cope with that, build it slightly differently, have different processes. Our teams, you know, most of our teams are volunteers now. We want to make sure that those teams are using processes and techniques that make sense to them and fit their needs and fit, you know, how much time they can volunteer. So this is why we have the development group concept, so we can have lots of different teams in the OpenSUSE project working at their own pace in their own way and hopefully somewhat self-moderating, making sure that their part that they know about is very, very good, and then they throw it towards factory, hit that process there, where we then pull the whole thing together. When you, f when you just do develop projects on their own, you're building a castle on shifting sands. Your project is moving at the pace that you know your project's moving in. But you don't know how fast factory's moving. You don't know how fast that other project's moving that's going to change something in factory that's going to change your thing. You might have everything working wonderfully in your develop project. You might be perfect. But is everybody else? And if you're working in isolation, you're just going to end up causing yourself more hassle in the long run when you maybe do eventually put it into factory and you do eventually submit it to a distribution and then it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. This was the kind of stuff that we took, uh, ended up coming up in the conversation with the, the KDE Neon guys earlier in the week. You know, they're, they're doing something very similar to a traditional open source develop project. Everything's fine for them now. They're going to have to rebase against the new Ubuntu version in the future. That's going to be a huge undertaking. The reason we have the factory process, the reason we do tumbleweed, is so this can just be done in small chunks, at our own pace, at our own time, using our own processes, so you avoid big, calamitous messes as a developer where you have to spend weeks and weeks picking out the mess. So please, stop misusing develop projects. We should be using develop projects to develop for our distributions. 
we don't support 13.1 anymore. Evergreen maintains what it can, but there's no expectation, there should be no expectation for our users to have shiny latest new Python on 13.1. On 13.2 is going to be end of life in less than a year. Why are we still building the latest and greatest in Python on top of it? Pardon? Okay. The, actually, you're right. These are the Python modules that the develop language Python where the Python is actually building is worse than this. I couldn't fit it all on the screen. So please, build only what you need in the develop project. The one thing you should always have is factory. Tumbleweed. The next thing, obviously, we're developing Leap 42.2 now. There is the possibility that some things might want to skip ahead or jump, you know, move from a develop project straight into there. Adding Leap 42.2 or adding SLE 12 SP next, you know, is the only three things that should be in a develop project because that's the only three targets where something might end up being sent as a submit request. They're the only things we're building stuff for. Everything else is not suitable for a develop repo. It's more work for you to maintain it, it's more work for you to fix it when it goes wrong, and it's more work for OBS to build it. Why are we wasting so much time and so much effort on something that ends up being a bad thing for our users in any way? And this is kind of belaboring the point a little bit, but Tumbleweed today will become Leap 43 and Slee 13 in the future. If we follow this process now, we move along, at the pace of tumbleweed, which is at the pace of contribution, so we can set the pace that suits us with our time as volunteers or as busy SUSE employees, we can still avoid chaos in the future. Leap benefits from that, SLE benefits from that. It's way easier to pull the packages from being in tumbleweed for a couple of weeks and then shove them into Leap. And keeping the packages only in a devel repo hide major integration issues, and then you have a huge and hard time getting everything working. Now, I know I'm asking everybody to do an awful lot more work, or maybe seem like to do more work, but you're not alone. We know what we're doing with this. We've been doing it for a very long time. We have the experts, we have the community around it. OpenSUSE Factory is where you should be discussing adding new, adding new packages, removing packages. If you're having issues in actually building a package, OpenSUSE Packaging is where you can get help on the nitty gritty of that. We have our C list, and obviously the OpenSUSE release team of, of Ludwig, Dominic, and Max, keeping all of this clean and tidy in Leap and in Tumbleweed. Now, every time I talk to anybody about this, I hear the same thing. Our policies are too strict. But they exist for damn good reasons. They've all been bought, they've all come from the fact that we've been doing this now for 10 years or longer, and there's Every single one of those rules exists for either a good engineering reason or a good community reason. And the ones that I hear most people object to are the ones that are there for the, actually because of the community. You know, as developers, it's probably quite easy for us. We look at it and we say, okay, I can see how that makes the code a higher quality. The policy makes sense. But we're an open source project. And if we're not doing stuff like making sure that our change logs are easy, easy to read, easily passable, spec files that are actually sane so somebody else someday might be able to come over and pick it up and read it and use it and make it better. Those are, in some respects, the more important policies because they're the ones that actually make OpenSUSE sustainable in the long term. So, yes, our policies do exist for a reason. Sometimes you might not necessarily get the logic behind it, but they're not crazy. They're not strict just for the sake of being strict. They're, they're strict for the sake of actually making it easier in the long term to keep the community moving forward. And ultimately, they share an awful lot in common with the ones used internally at SUSE for SUSE Linux Enterprise. That, you know, it, that's a very, very good quality distribution. They know what they're doing. We know what we're doing. We work very, very well with that. But no open SUSE policy is set in stone. We, we can discuss them, we can adapt them. If there is a sensible reason to do so, let's talk about it. Now, slide's not working, there we go. I want to see as much as we can in the distribution. But being a realist, I know we can't put everything in there. 
legal reasons, engineering reasons, and sometimes practical reasons of just wanting to offer something in a slightly different way doesn't mean that we can put everything in there. We need to get better than what we've been doing, but sometimes additional repos have to be done right. And the way SUSE builds SLE is a model we really should be considering for some of our stuff. Because they generally don't, with the exception of Package Hub, generally don't build an add-on in a separate project and just hope it magically works. There is, inside the internal SUSE build service, there is one big SLE project, which is very, very similar to our big factory project. And everything is built there and tested there and consistently made sure that it works together, all cut from the same cloth, and then the products are separated out and distributed differently as different repositories. This works very, very well. Because you make sure that everything's been built together. It's been designed to work together. It's more likely to be very easy that a customer can then add any combination of those add-ons or modules together, and the thing is going to work. It's a heck of a lot easier to test it together. And also, because ultimately, all that carving up takes a little bit of work, you know, there's a little bit of work involved in separating this stuff, it makes sure that each extension or module or add-on is as small as it needs to be, and no bigger. Which is, you know, a very good thing from an engineering perspective, and it also makes sure that they only move when they need to. The less times you move it, the less times it breaks. So I think when OpenSUSE comes to thinking about add-ons, we really should only be thinking about it when there's no other choice. It should, only, it should be in the distribution by default whenever we can do it. It's less complicated, it's easier for our users, it's easier for us to maintain in the long run. So for Tumbleweed, kind of my, my personal feeling is we should start with the concept of no add-ons. There shouldn't be any need to add an additional repo for Tumbleweed because the whole thing is always rolling, we can always submit something new, we can always change it, so why bother? The exception, of course, being proprietary kernel modules, which are you know, te potentially technically and legally issue hard to put in there, and obviously sister projects like Pac-Man, where obviously we can't do that either. But for Leap, yes, I think there is a case for stable projects, possibly. You know, users might want a stable version, something newer than what's been released. That's really the only use case, I think, of where we should be spending too, lots of effort thinking about this. Backporting new versions of stuff for Leap users. And if we do do this, it should be a small, tightly defined repo. Just what the user needs to get what the user wants. Not every single library, not every single module, just the bits that are needed to get the user happy. And of course, it should only be built for Leap because, well, 13.1 and 13.2 are both ending support soon, and SLE already has Package Hub. From a conceptual point of view, I kind of see it working something like this, maybe. There's a develop project in Tumbleweed, there's already Python, that's been submitted, and then we backport it, take it out again, have it as a stable repository for, for Leap. Because then from a user's perspective, everything becomes easy again. They have Leap, they add a repo, and because that repo is only what needs to be to get the thing in the hands of the users, a zippered up should be a perfectly sane and sensible way of updating it. So in theory, that frees of develop projects is so they're only built for development, again, as they should be. So we're not wasting our time worrying about build failures on architectures we don't support or build failures against distributions we don't support. It gives users a nice, clear, easy way of saying, okay, that's a stable repo, I can use that. It makes it clear to users which ones are safe. It tidies up a lot of mess. And it should be a heck of a lot easier for us to test, especially because I want to put everything in open QA. But this isn't a perfect concept. There are still problems. Because how do we define small and tight and tiny? You know, how small is it really? We haven't got any policies for that. We haven't got any concept of that. We need to think, if we're going to do this, we need to think about that and be exactly sure how we define what is narrow. How do we review it? How do we make sure so we can actually do this sustainable for, a few, for several years? How do we solve dependencies between repos? How do we make sure that someone adding stable A and stable B doesn't clash with each other? 
how do we handle upgrades? How do we handle versions of Leap that change? How do we handle versions of the stable repository that change? Do we end up with maintenance? Do we end up with testing? And the more I think about these problems, the more I go back to my earlier point. Adding packages to the distribution is actually easier than figuring this mess out. But this is the mess we have to figure out if additional repositories are going to be sensibly usable by users in the long term. So, to recap, maintainers, please put your packages in the distro. Users, please stop using develop projects because it's going to break on you sooner or later. Stable repositories might be a good idea, but it's going to take a heck of a lot of work, a lot of discussion, a lot of planning. But if we want to keep that concept of additional repositories where people can sort of Lego brick build their distro, we, you know, let's collectively get together and do it. We can't carry on like this. Questions? Hey, Stanislav. Can somebody get him a microphone? Thank you. Well, 10 years ago when we created the developer repositories, uh, we have been thinking about the idea that, for example, if you want to latest GIMP, uh, that you don't have to install a factory, uh, but you can subscribe to the repository. But now it looks like a bad idea. I think that uh, we, we should drop most of the developer repositories and keep one developer repository like staging and make some reasonable exceptions like uh, GNOME Next or so. Because, uh, because in fact, uh, there is uh, no reason to uh, subscribe leave packages to, uh, to, the, uh, to the developer repository, uh, which, uh, because it cannot break anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. It can break anything. And I'm, I'm actually really thinking more of Leap users who are taking, you know, the version of something in a develop repository before it's even got to the factory and then breaking everything there. Uh, okay. Um, so one reason there is uh, the idea of uh, flat packs and whatever is, um, oh, one specific uh, example that I'm not seeing that your proposal is solving. Suppose you want to support HTTP2, right? So what you need in order to be really HTTP2 compliant is a more recent version of uh, OpenSSL than almost any stable distribution shipping, which is 102. Most modern distributions do have that, but usually on servers you're running sort of stable distribution for a reason. So how are you going to solve that? Because OpenSSL is a very fundamental library. Now, with, let's say, an Nginx compiled uh, a site in a, in a flat pack with its own OpenSSL, that's easy. But of course, it's one you want to avoid. But how are you going to solve that? Well, if there really is a use case for something like that, and I, well, I think there is. I mean, with Leap, we don't follow the traditional ode, everything must be frozen after the point of release. We can do version upgrades in the maintenance model. Maybe we shouldn't be doing that for OpenSSL, but you know, we do have that flexibility. Plus, with an annual release cycle, it's not actually that far away to the next Leap 42.x when that could be done. So in the case of Tumbleweed, it moves straight through. It's already there. In fact, that, you know, that example, I think, was put in a few months ago. And it's going to be there now in Leap 42.2 in November. So yeah, I, I think with the way we've already got the model there, we don't brush into that issue too much when we do the backports or flat packs are the solution to that. Go on, uh, so I'm in fully agreement with your analysis. And some part of your solution, like pushing more packages to Tumbleweed, which is definitely something we should do. The only problem with that is that uh, for more or less long period of time, we are keeping Leap user out of the loop. If, for instance, we push an, a package in Tumbleweed one month after 42.2 is released, we have to handle uh, user on Leap. And I'm wondering uh, if we should try to expand or tune the concept of package hub, meaning having um, not only backports, but new packages available as a maintenance project for Leap, so that when maintainers things push packages to Tumbleweed, they can also push the same packages, build stable 
on this package up for, for, for leap uh, repo, it would be, uh, it won't, you, it wouldn't move. We could do automated check on it. And people would be always able to revert to this version if there is a new version coming out. A bit like an update repo, but for new packages and not just for new version of packages which are on leap, which is, I would say, another problem. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why I put these here, because kind of, you know, if we do this in this model, that would enable that. Um, but I'd love Scott's opinion on that, just to put him on the spot. Actually, I'm glad you brought this slide up because I had a correction for you. Um, instead of building against the SLE 12 SPX, if you want to build packages for SLE, what we recommend now is to build against the OpenSUSE backports colon SLE 12 because that's where we want to, like, for basically some of the, many of the same reasons that Richard talked about. Um, why it makes sense to get more things into factory and in, into tumbleweed, we found um, as we are trying to investigate the best ways to deliver packages for our enterprise users from OBS, um, it's, it, it'll be better to build your package, it could be much better to build your packages against this backports project in, in, um, for SLE 12. So that should be actually backports Forget, yeah, yep, okay. There. Um, another comment I had is as I was also doing a bit of investigation, I also happened to look at the uh, Python project. Um, and, and Richard and I didn't even talk about his presentation or anything. And I presented something f quite similar in the talk I did about backports yesterday, some of the same concepts. Um, but one thing you didn't mention, um, where pushing things into factory makes it easier for packagers, I believe, from what I've seen in the build service, is that in, like in the Python project, they're doing source copies or source links from other devel projects because of dependencies they have, and those packages that they have, that they're source copying in, are not in Tumbleweed. So they need to maintain a copy within their own project so they can build the package. Now, that could make it easier for them to build if it was just in Tumbleweed to begin with. And not only that, because those dependent packages aren't in Tumbleweed, it blocks them from releasing their package into Tumbleweed. So the more we work on pushing the stuff into factory in Tumbleweed, it should make it easier for all of us who are maintaining packages because we can more easily build upon each other's work. I totally agree. Uh, yeah. Actually, we discussed this when we prepared the Tumbleweed itself, uh, how to work with the developer projects, and one of the items that were not ever fixed was that everything that's in developer project should be in Tumbleweed or linked to somewhere else to support building only for the other distributions. But it was never finished, so it's still standing there like this. From my point of view, yeah, we should simply build against factory, and for new packages, new versions, we still have working maintenance pro pro projects, and we accept both of those, either version updates or new packages into the distribution. So it's just that people never actually bother to request updates or the newer, new packages in Leap, or they don't know they could request it, actually. I agree. Adrian has a question there. Um, I disagree a bit that you should not build against stable distributions because this, from my point of view, this rules out that we get upstream people working directly with our, um, yeah, for our next distributions because they are interested in first place in the stable distributions and tumbleweed and factory and backports are just an add-on. They focus mostly to get their users satisfied and their users usually are on a stable version. Okay, we, they could work in one project, then submit to a devil project and then submit, but they have usually one workplace and 
you just ignore it when you submit it back, something away. You have one workplace where you look at and you fix your stuff there. And I, I don't think this is working. I mean, I'm lately trying to put some packages to factory again and I get it, the package is working within a day and it takes more than a month to get something to, to factory. And for an upstream guy who focus on the stable distributions for their users, I just remove factory repos and, and tumbleweed. But if you end up with an upstream guy targeting, for example, Leap42.1, which you know, has approximately one year of support left to it. And then, okay, we could push that out as a maintenance update, but it's not going to benefit from any of this testing, any of these steps, any of the reviews. You know, we really want to have upstream people working with Tumbleweed first because they can move that all the time. My point was, I think you are separating these groups unnecessarily. Why do separate? Why not work together with upstream people also on, uh, on, on the next distribution uh, packages? But if you say these devil projects must not build for stable distributions, you are ruling them out. You are ruling out an entire large group of developers in the build service. But then we're going to have to do a whole bunch of duplication because they might have it working on Leap 42.1. It might not work on factory. Who's going to take care of that second part? We, we get ourselves into those messes where we have a whole bunch of stuff that works on, old distro, on our older distros and then we can't get the thing in factory and then it ends up being dropped in factory, which is how we have weird and wonderful messes like now where factory is missing stuff that's in Leap and factory is missing stuff that's in Slee. We need to stop that. Okay, but you are only seeing it from the point of view of the next distributions. The other groups are looking exactly from the other direction. They are looking for their users, for their stable distributions. And, and you say well, you don't have, want them? We have an upstream here who has a, has a comment to say, so let's see what KDE has to say on this. No pressure, Martin. So, um, I think upstreams are not interested in providing software for distributions because there are too many distributions. If they try, they fail. That's exactly what we see. Like, if um, in own cloud case, they did actually packages and the Debian developers were pissed at them because they did bad packages. Hmm? Just like the OpenSUSE. And I think that's what we see everywhere. The, the upstream developers don't want to middle with 20 different distributions and that's why we, there are things like Flatpak. Um, I think that's the way to go for upstream projects trying to get software to a um, stable distribution if they want to. They need to stop doing packages if they do that and I think most upstreams just don't care because they cannot keep up with it. And if they do care and they only want to work on one of our distributions, I'd much rather they work on Tumbleweed because that's the one that you know, is the next. Lars. Uh, um, so, oh, so, so cooler first. She gave me the mic without knowing your rules. Um, so I agree completely with Adrian here. Basically, you're ignoring where the users are because just as Martin says, upstreams don't care about distributions, they care about users. They own cloud client in OBS exists not because of Leap or of Tumbleweed, they exist because of their own cloud users. That's what they have the package for and that's why the package is so bad because they rather uh, deploy a workaround to have yet another distribution building than having a clean package that would be acceptable for the distribution as is. So, um, and I would like to ask you what software did you use to create your blog post? Jekyll. Jekyll. Is this in the distribution? Not yet. So, did you ask anyone to submit it to a distribution? Yes. Did he do that? He said he will. Did you wait for him to finish including it in the distribution? He was did a little busy helping set the conference up. So, basically you're saying no. No, I'm saying it should be in the distribution and that's what I'm going to continue pushing for. But you already have it now, right? Yeah, but I don't necessarily mind that my blog might break at any time. But that's not the point I was trying to make. The point is, users are very, very happy 
that there are home projects building packages that are not necessarily yet in the distribution. But that is a lame excuse. We should not be doing that. We shouldn't accept that as, vi as viable. We should be doing it better than that. Because it, ultimately it will break, and then who's going to fix it for that user? I can fix it for myself when it comes to Jekyll. I can just spend the time pick, fixing my damn package. We expect all of our users to do that? The problem is how many steps of those that are currently on screen are applying to Jekyll? Non-pre-integration testing, no QA afterwards, almost no factory permission. So basically the gain of having it submitted is really having someone doing manual review and yelling at you because you put some work around it. You're there. focusing on the engineering part. You forgot all of that stuff with software.openSUSE.org and Zipper, where it's a nightmare getting the damn thing in the first place. But Torsten has something to say. Yes. Kulo, if you say that the end users need a stable version of the devil projects, that's wrong. Because as Richard thought, if you add a devil project, on your distribution leap in older one and run zipper dub most of the time your this installation is afterwards broken. So uh, before you uh, so adding the stable things to devil projects, it's not the right way to go, but creating stable repos and then add the old stable distributions to it to build, that's the right way to go. Uh, could you give it to Lars? He's been raising yes. his head. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you mentioned that one-click install problem we have. So you say our users should be able to easily install packages from devil projects. Well, how say, does that fit with your second answer that users should not use packages from the devil project? Okay, I, I, good question. If we are going to offer some kind of stable repository. If we are going to support some workflow where we do ex expect users to use additional repositories, they should have some easy way of doing it. So right now, I think we should stop users using develop projects. If we do that entirely, then one-click install becomes meaningless and we don't need it. If we instead put in something like some stable repositories, something like one-click install becomes important, we have to fix it. Okay, so you're just inventing new staging or better stable repositories, right? Yes. Okay. Um, no comment to that. I just want to know who's doing the work, but that's another point. Um, on the other way, I totally agree with Kulu and Adrian. Um, I try to keep track on all the 400 or 500 packages in education. And I have people from Upstream working with me, luckily, at least 10 of them are working on their code in education. Most of them just care for the Debian packages or for some Fedora packages. So, no, what should I do? Should I try to convince them pushing all that stuff to Tumbleweed? They would say how many users inside the education world are using Tumbleweed. And I can tell you from my own experience right now, during summertime when all the schools having vacation. That's the time when teachers updating their systems. During a whole year, you see nothing. But during summertime, all teachers updating all their school servers and school clients to the latest and greatest version, which is not Tumbleweed, because they have students, they have to rely on a stable distribution. So. The best case that I see always is that they are using Leap right now. But, to be honest, they still run OpenSUSE 13.1 and they still run OpenSUSE 11.4, just to keep you an idea of it. And that's the reason why we in the education project, for example, still support such old distributions. And I can fully understand them, because on one side, I, as a developer, want to have the latest and greatest stuff. On the other side, I have to agree with them, they have no time to work on that all the time. They have just a limited amount of time and they are happy if their system is stable enough to run their daily workload. And they are just happy that they can use our devil project because there they can even find some up-to-date packages they want to use in their daily workflow. 
How is it going to work when that package is broken? How is that going to work when the develop package is broken? How, when the project is broken? Easy this, answer. This... Here's the solution. The devil maintainers. That's it. And we have such a mess right now because the devil maintainers can't keep that workload. Sorry. Yeah, so you obviously have picked the most stupid example. I mean, adding devil languages Perl or devil languages Python or something like that to your machine and not being a hardcore Perl developer or even then is certainly not going to work because it has some 5,000 packages in there and obviously will kill. And all are affecting the base system, so this will be uh, not, not working, obviously. For the purpose I mean, of this example, I was a user who just wanted Elasticsearch. Yes. I didn't want Python, yeah, I didn't yeah, care yeah. about the modules, so, all I wanted was Elasticsearch. Yes, so what, what do we need to do? Maybe, I mean, Lars and I, we are on a, on a we, we are lucky because our devil repositories actually are not devil repositories, because Lars is, is education, it's not devil education, it's education, so it's not a devil repository. My pet repository is the VDR, the video disc recorder repository, which is also not a devil repository by name. We're just lucky because they're old enough. They were created before the namespace was cluttered with devil. And one example is, are the VDR repositories. There are two of them, VDR and VDR plugins, and there's no way I'm ever going to submit the VDR plugins to factory because that's just too much, too much uh, humiliation I'm going to endure trying to get this code in there. The code is still useful and it works, and it works from Schrodin.2, Leap, Tumbleweed, because I test it there. And so maybe what we need, I, I, I can follow you that we don't want the, the real hard, die-hard devil repositories added to everyone's machine, but something like really we, we have some where, where people say, okay, this is a, a somewhat stable, you have to trust us as developers that we keep it somewhat stable. We will probably not update glibc in our repository or something like that, some stupid stuff, but there's just the education or sometimes also the games repository is one of them where I occasionally fix stuff. I'll accept your point to, an, uh, to a, a bit because, yes, yeah, something like the VDR repository might be a prototype for what could end up being called a stable repository in the future, but then we need to still answer these other questions. You know, you're, you do it yourself right now and everybody's just expected to trust you. No, let's have some standards, let's have some criteria, some, you know, some quality controls. So everybody who's saying, I'm doing this in my stable repository, it's good enough. Right. Um, one last question, I think, yeah, Ralph had his hand up, so. Uh, I have a question. Um, I think the, f the main reason what uh, caused the problem with Elasticsearch is that it's ended up in the, wrong in the wrong repository. It should never been in a Python repository. It's a Java project. It should be, to my, op my opinion, in a logging project. And I think projects like I maintain also stuff in, uh, in games, in monitoring, in security, I think these are all useful projects, and it's all, yeah, I agree also that it's a lot of extra work to maintain it, and if you also push it upstream. I mean, I have a project like uh, Cacti, and it causes a lot of work because I pushed it upstream. Now I have to do an update, I have to update in all different open source versions. If it would be only in, uh, in, mon in monitoring, it would be a lo lot less work for me. And that's a fair point, but then, then we need our maintainers to stop treating develop projects just like a dumping ground like they are right now. And make, if they wanted to be used by users, we need to be worrying about which one it's in. Yeah. And you know, how is somebody going to consume this? How is this actually really meant to work in the real world, not just on our developer machines? Yeah, but is it not uh, to the maintainers to decide if a project belongs there? I mean, I think they should have rejected a request to, and to do the submit request in, in Python. I'm not so sure. So, listening carefully, and I'm not a packager or a developer here, so I'm definitely coming more from, from the user side. I think you're trying to bring two teams or maybe even three different categories all together with one slide deck and I think that's the problem because I also can see that what an upstream maintainer wants from our tools 
is different and they call success different than what a developer or a distro package a developer wants and what a user wants. So maybe if you change the wording a little bit, not has to, must, or stable, you know, you associate with stable a lot of criteria being, you know, really quality stamped and all of that. And that might be too much for somebody who in his free time makes VDR work, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe the trick is using a different term, you know, there's an apps repo or there's a leaf package repo, because for leaf packages, as some people said, they'll not mess around with base dependencies. And, you know, there is this criteria, it's good enough, somebody has tested it, so I can install it. For a leaf package, I think that's fine. You're pushing it to to factory is maybe asking for too much or applying all these But if questions. it's a leaf package, it's very easy to push to factory. That's, you know... We yeah, but if you then ask for all these additional things, it has to pass this thing and it has to pass all of the other things and like somebody said, uh, what is the benefit for me as the guy in the free time packages it? If I don't have benefit from it, um, then why should I do it? So I can understand that. At the same time, I think there are really good ideas in there. Yeah. And, and maybe not my thing versus your thing, but there is middle ground. There is these leaf packages, and which are nice to have on as many distributions as there are users for. And if build power is a problem, we can talk about that. Um, but uh, <laughs> matching developer and Losses, user, yes. matching developer and user <laughs> in one slide deck is a damn difficult problem, I think. It is, but I. That's the reason I did this slide deck, actually, because I think we've forgotten what our users are suffering because of the decisions we've made as developers. So I totally agree with the first 35 slides. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And uh, I've, I've already run five minutes over, so thank you very much.